Great, thanks so much, Shelley. And I think um, lots of different questions that may come out of some of those wonderful projects. I'm going to move over to introduce Harry Daly, who is um, <clears throat> with the Greater St. John Community Foundation. And Harry, now all of your time to tell us about the wonderful things you're working on. Perfect, thank you so much. Uh, and uh, yeah, thank you for uh, the invite, Brady. Uh, my name, as mentioned, is Harry Daly. I work with the Greater St. John Community Foundation in New Brunswick. Uh, we're kind of a mid-size foundation of about $20 million in our endowment. Uh, and we work with the urban St. John, as well as the kind of, it's about 75,000 people. Um, and the metro area, when you pull in the suburbs, brings it up to about $130,000. But we also work with a number of different rural communities. Uh, we have a pretty wide catchment area. Uh, so a number of different rural communities outside of that. Um, St. John has a really rich history. It's one of the oldest, uh, or it is the oldest incorporated city in Canada. Uh, but of course, for, for many millennia, about 12,000 years before this, this has been uh, land that many people have lived on. Uh, St. John is right at the, the conflux of the Willisnook River uh, and the Bay of Fundy. And so the Willisnook River, more commonly known as the St. John River. Um, so this has been the, it's the unceded territory of the Willisnook, but it's uh, traditionally known as a meeting space uh, between the Mi'kmaq, the Willisnook, and also the Passamaquoddy, who occupy the upper reaches of the bay. So uh, a lot of really rich history uh, as a meeting place here. And um, I think that kind of feeds in, I've had a bit of a switch of what I was gonna talk about, but um, we'll see how that, that, that fares for me here. Um, I think when I think about the opportunities pre and post COVID, um, I think the things that really stand out to me um, are the importance of, you know, as, as a foundation locally is embracing complexity and really encouraging curiosity within the, the community that we work in. And, and what I mean by that um, is I was hired in uh, February of 2020, so about a month before COVID, um, really had no idea that was on our, on our way or the world that we would be living in less than a month after I was hired. Uh, but Part of the reason that I was hired uh, was to form this branch of the Community Foundation. So myself and my colleague, uh, Carrie Tanasichuk, formed the Impact Measurement and Evaluation Branch. And that was really in response to a need that the executive director saw in the community. Uh, we do a lot of small pilot funding. So we'll fund, you know, $25,000 to $60,000 are most of our grants. And those are usually to try to prove some initiative. And then the hope is that they can then access some type of sustainability funding um, from whether that be a government funder, one of the larger foundations here. And what we saw is to, if, if that's really what we were hoping to do, um, a lot of those larger, the governments uh, and larger foundations were really looking for clear articulations of outputs and outcomes in the reporting that they were doing. And um, so we were hired to kind of build up the capacity because what we were seeing is that there was a big push for that, but there wasn't really any support for organizations. You know, some of these are really small grassroots organizations. Those words are quite confusing and intimidating. Uh, and, and it quite often left them feeling disenfranchised that they weren't doing a good job. Um, and so when COVID hit, it really, um, gave us the opportunity, Carrie and I as a new team, to stop and pause and think about, um, you know, learn from each other, first of all, like get to know each other, tell stories about our, our, our histories, our understandings of evaluation, what worked well and what has not worked well. Uh, and, and from there, start to listen to the community and the organizations that we were going to be serving. So um, we were initially gonna hit the ground running and really dive into it. This is what the board has said we needed to do. But what we started to see is that, um, the, the outcome-based measurement, like the predetermined outcomes, uh, people were really left feeling like that did not capture in any way the scope of the work, the nuance and the complexity of the communities that they were working in. Uh, and, and that quite often, that when that's expected of them, they were left feeling like they weren't doing a good job. And what we started to see is that the impact that an organization is having and their ability to articulate it the way somebody else thinks they should are very different things. Uh, and so what we really tried to shift our focus to was how do we, how do we shift our reporting process, our application, our expectation away from that kind of predetermined accountability outcome, uh, really focus in on learning and building up curiosity about what's happening. And I think that COVID-19 showcased that so much because in February, when we did our sprint caring grants in February of 2020, um, you know, any of the predetermined outcomes that people had thought that they should have a year from there, obviously, you know, most cases those were out the window. Uh, and, and that wasn't 
just happening during COVID. That had been happening years before, but there was this expectation that if you do something, it will lead to this act, you know, this behavior change and this outcome. And what we really started to see is that that, that does not in any way, shape or form capture the nuances of the work that the organizations that we were working with were doing. And so um, we've shifted our reporting process to really focus in on learning and storytelling. And what we encourage organizations to do is to really build up their capacity to be curious. So rather than thinking about, you know, here's your activity, here's a intermediate outcome and here's a long-term outcome, you know, put something into motion and see what happens. And how, how can you look at, you know, what things are impacting that? And, and rather than it being, um, you know, a process that has a very definitive beginning and end, how do you constantly just watch and, and articulate what is happening uh, so that you're learning and being curious? And, and what we found, um, you know, and, and Shelly, I think just hearing you, obviously know much more about this than I would, but what we've really tried to encourage is stories. Um, stories have been such an empowering tool uh, for the organizations. It's language that, that resonates with them. Um, it also, um, it also resonates with the, the communities that they're working with and the participants. And so when we're talking about building capacity around impact measurement and evaluation now, what we're really been shifted towards over the past years, how do we build up the capacity of an organization to be curious and then also create spaces for the people in the communities that they're working with to authentically share their stories because the nuances of the work that a lot of them are doing, especially in the social sector, um, it can't be captured, uh, all, it can't always be captured the way that some of these bigger funders that are so far removed from these people um, think it should. So how do you create space for storytelling? Um, and, and so we've shifted our reporting process or application process. Uh, a lot of it can be done in person. They get to choose the stories that are the questions that they report on. And they also get to choose the medium in which they want to report because uh, what we found was that you know, our reporting structure pre-COVID was not very robust. And I think that that was a good thing because quite often we weren't even using that information for much of anything. So, um, you know, why we need these big robust metrics in place when we weren't using them for anything. And so we've shifted, um, we've shifted to, to allow the organizations to decide what questions they want to answer and how they want to answer those. Uh, and quite often that is through stories. Uh, so. I think that that's kind of the biggest shift for us is that we thought that there might be a, some semblance of control and how we could help people just understand um, outputs and outcomes and that they would be much uh, you know, better equipped to articulate that. And what we found now is that uh, as an organization, we're really trying to embrace complexity uh, and also encourage curiosity through storytelling.